This interview is being tape recorded. My name is Paul Maleri and this is X Job Downloaded. And today I'm going to interview the human lie detector, Darren Stanton. Now, Darren and I worked together on the Rob Rinder, Judge Rinder's interrogation room, which was on A&E, Sky Crime, I think it was, or was it A&E? I can't remember now, Darren. It's Apple, it's Apple TV, Amazon Prime, um, Crime everything. Investigation Channel as well. Yeah, everything. So everything. Um, we worked together on that and... Uh, we're fortunate enough to meet each other. Now, Darren, I ask everybody this, but um, where did it all begin for Darren Stanton? What's Darren Stanton all about? And uh, the floor yeah. is yours, sir. Sure. So basically, it started at the age of five, being forced into having piano lessons by my parents. So, oh, you're was... brilliant at piano. I've, I've seen your stuff, mate. You're absolutely phenomenal. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. Um, that's my, It's still my passion. I know you play as well, play, play guitar and the band and whatnot. So... You know, you, you get a real buzz from from playing an instrument, especially in a band. So my, that was my plan to be in music. And, um, you know, one of the rest of my mates were out sort of playing football and whatnot. I was like doing my scales. Brilliant. Um, and then you sort of fast forward to when you get into sort of 17, you get into all the things, don't you? So um, what I'd found, though, Paul, is probably like yourself. I'd always had a real interest in people. I'd always found it really interesting to talk to people and Often I'd, I'd meet someone for the first time and we'd talk and, you know, friends would say, how long have you known them? And I'm like, I've just met them. So I was able to kind of get that rapport quite quickly. So, you know, I had a real passion for just, again, what, finding out what makes people tick. Um, and then I, I kind of I did stop playing, but I, I, I kind of didn't follow the aspiration of being like a classical pianist or a, a professional musician. I put that on the back burner. Um, so I ended up doing... Um, sort of psychology at uni um and i'd love to show cracker back in the day for those those that are watching that, that remember that show with robbie coltrane i thought wow what psychologist goes around like helping the cops catch people catch catch the bad guy and as we know that job doesn't exist because no psychologist would be be allowed on interview um but i did psychology nevertheless and uh i found i really got on with it um and then back in the day i'm talking the 90s now there was a lot more money swimming around so I did my um, training at Nottingham Prison, Watson in, in Nottinghamshire, uh, became like a trainee assistant psychologist um, oh. in the prison service. And I found that I hated the environment, yeah, um, okay. the whole thing. Um, and then I did that for quite a while. And then I had quite a lot of friends in the police because growing up, our house was, was a tea spot for cops on foot patrol. You know, So I had a real close connection with a lot of police officers. Um, and that's what, that's what know, we drink. But, yeah, one of my, one of my, one of my dad's friends, he was around one day. And he said, he says we're recruiting. Why don't you join the job? And for the next couple of weeks, I was on an R in, and then, you know, I spent a bit of time. You, you could then, like the old control, you go in the control room at night and sit there and listen to jobs coming in. And so I you know, went, went for the went for the job and got in and spent just under twenty years. You know, pretty much done a lot of stuff like traffic, um, but mostly career response officer. Um, and obviously up here we do all our interviews. I, mean, I know now it's passed on to sort of civilian investigators, but you know, sort of did it. So I had a real passion for interviewing and found that I got on really well with it. Um, and then 2010 really was a catalyst. I lost both both my parents, and I pretty much come to a point where I wanted to do different something different. And I've been mooching around for quite a while, Paul, really doing um, public speaking, and um, I'd had a little bit of media work coming in. Wasn't being paid a penny for it. Um, but then I got asked to do the 2010 general election because when clamoring Clegg and Brown, um, we were that was the first ever live televised debate, right? The Americans had done it for since the 60s with Kennedy, um, so that was the kind of a, the, the first thing that Sky News did. And they said, Oh, can you assess the body language for us? And I said, Yeah, great. So again, never got paid a penny, um, but since that moment, it just snowballed, and before I knew it. I was assessing the Iraq Inquiry, Select Committee, um, Rupert Murdoch with the um, phone hacking scandal, uh, was writing for the press. Um, then I got an email from America, which I thought was a scam, um, to go and shoot a TV pilot in uh, Los Angeles. Um, I kept deleting the email, thinking it was some sort <laughs> of flag. Uh, and then I'd got an agent by then. He says, no, have you heard this company? I, I, why have you not contacted us? I said, no, why? He says, the kosher it's it's not a, it's not a scam so within a fortnight i was in santa monica shooting the tv fantastic so, 
it's a bit different from waking up at four in the morning, scraping the windscreen on mornings to suddenly being in 28 degree <laughs> temperature. Oh, fantastic. Know. Um, and then that's that's the kind of you know acceleration, yeah. So since 2010, my feet haven't touched the ground really. It's it's fun, isn't it? Because I mean, we all do things for for nothing. I mean, that's 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 the reality because yeah, we want to succeed and get on and you know but you know what it's it's about exposure as much as anything else and um and if we didn't want to do it we wouldn't do it would we i think that's the thing about it paul is people think i mean i've you know i i mentioned the other night i was watching the telly you was on a documentary about barring war um you know so you popped up so people think we're making tens of thousands of pounds but they don't realize the reality no. i mean I've, I've, I've done the one show i've done this morning and I won't say what, but it's not a lot as you I can probably guess how much you got paid. Yeah, so yeah. If, if you're doing this for the money, you're going to have a rude awakening, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you need your bumps for it. Oh, yeah, there are people that go on and, you know, become the Holly Willoughby's and all that sort of stuff. I and mean, yeah. we get that. But, um, yeah, but it's an interesting world. You, you're known, known as the human lie detector, but you are you look at behaviours and body language and you, you pick apart what people do and how they don't engage. Or do engage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a label that a, a journalist, um, I can't remember which paper, but a journalist kind of kind of dubbed me that. Um, a lot of my track, obviously, background comes from psychology. Most of it comes from interviewing on a daily basis. Because as we know, you know, statistically, most people were lying to us on interview. Yeah. Um, so a lot, a lot of it comes from that. And then I, I did other stuff while I was in the job. And again, you know, there's, there's no money around now, but the job board, if you wanted to do a course and you could justify it, it would help you in the, in the job, you know, like uh, the CPD stuff, they'd, they'd pay for you. So, yeah. you know, I did things like hypnosis, um, NLP, which is like a communication tool. And then um, sort of a while back, I did a thing called micro-expression training um, and lots of other sort of bits and bobs. So it, what I do is a mishmash. So really, as we know, you can't spot lies. There's, you know, no one... No one sort of, no, there's no even polygraph. There's nothing that can say, oh, this person's lying. All we're really looking for is a change in emotion. So we're, really all I'm good at is, and we call it sensory acuity, is I've become very good at seeing when people's emotions change. Um, so, for example, on interview, if, if people that are watching that are cops or ex-cops, you know, there's a point in the interview that might suddenly shift. You know, the person is saying, yeah, I'm happy to talk to you, officer. Um, you know, I've got no, nothing to hide. But then at some point, as you begin to unpick that, that account, um, you know, there may be emotional changes. You know, they may, the lips may go very pale. Now, your average cop's not trained in this, so they won't see it. Um, and again, it's not admissible. So I couldn't go to the inspector and say, um, can, I have, can, I, can I do such and such? Because he's, he's looked in a certain direction. Because, as you know, we're getting, yeah. we're getting laughed out of custody. Um, so really, what I'm looking for is, is when people are afraid of the um consequence so we're not looking at the, the frothy stuff like i work on shows like love island and strictly and and celebrity um but the big stuff so i do a lot of um ct work with various agencies i do sort of security aviation security so when they're talking to a potential suspect that you know if they get caught out the consequences are big the brain goes into a state called um, cognitive overload and that in turn goes to what we call detection apprehension. So the more that someone wants to try and maintain this calm composure, um, the more it wants to leak out. And no matter who somebody is, a politician, a king, we've all got the same neurology and physiology. So we're all prone to these these techniques. And very often, you know, I've been asked by journalists, well, are you a good liar? And I'm like, well, no, if, if I teach you how to do it, you can catch me out too. So it doesn't mean that I'm impervious to it even though i do it for a living that's interesting because i remember when we did the um the promotional shoot at uh in london and rob was a bit reluctant to do his uh his bit with you wasn't he, he was he, he was sort of oh i don't i don't feel very comfortable <laughs> he, says, he says i'm a good liar darren i've been a lawyer all my life i, was like, I know but even even like the kids it's a little kids game and you know invite you at home to do this if you get a coin um and then you what you do what you do what's called a baseline so you'll say to somebody Right, put your hands behind your back, put the coin in one or the other, and just be honest with me. So when I say, is it here? If it's not there, say no. Well, if it's here, say yes. So you're taking a mental snapshot of that person's face for, for truth. And then you say, now put your hands behind your back, you know, keep the same hand, change, change the hand, 
But then this time answer yes for both questions. So you're going to lie to me. Now, a, a quick tip is what they'll do is unconsciously, they'll either tilt their nose or they'll tilt their head very subtly because unconsciously the brain wants to give, give it away. So that's a very subtle first step that you can do to get into this. Wow. Your TV stuff. I mean, you've worked with all the stars. Where do they sit you when you're doing things like I'm a celeb or Strictly? Where do you actually sit in relation to the, the, the filming? Or do they send oh, I, you... Yeah, the... I'm not on set or anything. I just watch it like everybody else watches it. Um, right. I, get, I get some rushes, so I, get, I do get some more extra footage. Um, so I'm looking for... So, for example, I have just I just did GB News the other night about Farage. No, I think Farage has surprised a lot of people because... Um, he's gone in there, he's been quite nurturing, he's become almost like the daddy of the camp already. Yeah. And he's been telling them how he nearly got killed in a plane crash. So I think people have seen a very different side to him. And once you take the man out of the politics, so he had a bit of a clash with um, the French guy, because obviously uh, the French guy is very anti-Brexit. Um, and so he flashed what's called a disgust micro-expression, which is that, that's, that's slowed down. So it's just almost like a bad smell. Right. So Nigel said something, and he got to flash that. So if you slow it right down, even though he's not, he's trying not to be rude internally. He is experiencing that emotion of of disgust, or the other good ones, contempt, which is like a one sided yeah. smile. An emoji. But it's very yeah. I mean, emojis are great. They are they are they are like micro expressions, really. I hadn't, I hadn't watched it until last night, and I've got to say that. Um... I'm not a massive fan of Nigel Farage, not at all. No, no. Um, and, yeah, did I want to stay in the European Union? Yes, I did, because I wanted my kids to have a free reign and, and travel. But anyway, yeah. we, we yeah. are where we are. But I did think that that young lady, Nella Rose, whatever her name is, is quite vile. The way that she she doesn't listen to anybody. She She's an influencer on, on social media, but I don't know who she's influencing because she just does not. She's got no cognizance of anybody else's feelings or behaviours. Well, I had to Google her because I, I didn't have a Scooby-Doo who she was. I mean, you know, they say celebrity, but I thought, who is she? You know, that YouTube influencer. Well, it's a stretch. But I agree. She's playing a bit of a bit of a mind game, really. Um, mm. she had a few. I think you're right. She's had a few conflicts and... I actually think she's going to be a casualty quite early. Yeah, I, I think she's going to be quite, <laughs> quite early doors. Yeah I, yeah, I do, mate, to be honest with you. I think I won't be voting either way. I'm not spending a penny on it. No, um, me neither. <laughs> but, uh... I, get, I get paid for that. So I only watch it. It's like, it's like things like Love Island. I mean, I, you know, I, I do it. I watch it because it's my job. But My nephew came second in Love Island. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, Jamie and Camilla. They're still together. Oh wow, that's good. Yeah, they're still together and they've got a couple of lovely kids and um yeah, wow. and they, they do a lot of stuff for charity. They're not they're not archetypical Love Island people, if that makes sense. You know, yes. they, yeah, they do the influencing and whatever, but yeah, they they're quite uh, they're not quite you know, they're not shallow in in the same way a lot of them are on there. Yeah. When um when you get these phone calls, I mean you said you've got you've got yourself an agent now. How did that all come about? Um well, I applied for quite a lot of agents because I thought, oh, I need an agent. And you know, you know what, Paul, I don't know if you've got one or not, but sometimes you, you don't really, you know, um, as long as you can, you, you, you're in contact with, as long as you've got your contact details. I mean, most of my, most of the BBC producers, everything, have got my phone number now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fortunately to which I'm kind of the go-to guy um, that they'll go to now for this sort of stuff. But it comes in very useful when you go, for negotiating. Um, yeah. I mean, they'll say, how much do you want? And I'm like, well, you sort that out with my agent. Um, so really, I initially contacted quite a few. And because I was quite early in my career, I didn't have like a massive amount of stuff. So they were like, well, come back in a couple of years. But I kind of just thought, well, I don't, I don't need one. I'll do it myself. But then they started contacting me. Right. Um, so that, that's how that came about. And I've had, I've had probably four agents Um since, since sort of 2010, but um, the guy the guy I'm with at the moment, you know, is is fantastic. It, but you, I, I mean, they must have all, you know, they all know you, so they can come directly to you. All your BBC producers, um, and you're situated in Nottingham. Nottingham. So you know, Manchester's not a. If you need to get to Media City and places like that, it's it's fairly easy. 
It's a great year. I mean, I prefer working in Manchester because London can be, for me, it's a bit of a pain. But yeah, but it's either London or Manchester. Yeah, so geographically, I'm in a, I'm in a good place, really. Yeah, I, I'm 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 up to Manchester in the next couple of weeks actually to see someone up at Media City. But it is, it, but you're right. I mean, people don't know. Certainly, when you come out of the cops, you don't know what to charge. When someone says, "Oh, how much do you want? What's your fee?" It's like, well, I don't know. And I think sometimes, and we said about it earlier on, some of these producers are expecting you to ask, you know, what's what yes. the fee. Um, but if you don't ask, you don't get. So it's a really, it's a really difficult thing because you and I, I'm quite happy, you know, not like the hotel they put us up in that we had when we did the the promo. But um, you know, you get get a nice hotel or you get a car to pick you up and whatever, yeah, which is lovely, and you get your sandwiches. I don't really get stressed about it, but it does, as I say, it's just knowing what what to charge and at what time. Yeah. So what projects are you on at the moment? You're doing I'm a Celebrity. Strictly, yeah, so, so I do strictly, and I think my first site's coming out, so that's all for the press. Um, I've got this live UK tour, um, uh, happening all next year on the UK, and that's really a like an interactive kind of thing. So, I'm not a magician, but it's kind of like a Darren Brown show in that it's interactive, so we get people on stage and we do some, do some stuff with them. Um, I do a routine that's called Anything to Declare. So, for example, we'll get like a little bag of sugar as if it's cocaine. Um, and we say, you guys in the audience are now going to be um, honorary customs officers. So we'll get them on stage. They decide who's going to be the drug smuggler. And then they apply what they've learned in the first half of the show to see who's lying. Um, and it's amazing because uh, you'll be amazed that even in, in, in sort of 30, 40 minutes of, of, of kind of like teaching them how to do it, the, a lot of the audience get it, get it right and they can justify why. So it's not just a guess. So we do a lot of interactive stuff like that. And then I'm going to be talking about the more darker side of stuff, um, yeah. you know, that you and I do, which is more about the, about the, killer, the killers and, and yeah. how what I do helps law enforcement, um, you know, catch a suspect. Well, so that's you, you, all the way through that next year. You, you raised the thing about Barrymore. What happened with Barrymore, uh, myself and Paul Thomas, we got selected by a psychologist, looked at our profiles and went through it and said who would be... Um, starstruck and who wouldn't be starstruck uh-huh. and um, Rocky and I got selected because they knew that we would just get on with the job we wouldn't be asking for autographs other than on a custody record yeah. um, but, but but you know you've worked with people who, who go the other way so that yes. yeah, that's what that's how we got we got selected but the, but the theatre stuff's really good uh, uh, Colin Sutton my lovely friend Colin Sutton I don't know if you've ever met him, but you you will you will but, meet him. He's absolutely brilliant. He's uh-huh. doing a theatre tour at the moment, and he's loving it because he's meeting all these great people that yeah. have seen him do his TV stuff, and you know Martin Clunes etc. Playing him, and uh, but it's absolutely superb. How many dates have you got booked? Um, I think I'm looking at fifty at the moment, so it's going to be quite wow. busy. That's around the country. The first one's in Lincoln on December the fifth. Um, yeah, yeah, December the first. Um, but then run the rest out sort of from February onwards. December the first, uh, like next week, December the first. Yeah, I've got the first one on the front. Yeah, so. I'm oh on wow. Uh, yeah, Lincoln. But then the rest are in the new year. And I've got a second book coming out. Um, so I wrote an initial book many years ago. That was more to do with um, personal development. But this book is all about really how I do what I do. It's kind of autobiographical, really. So it's how I got into it. It's my journey. Plus, it teaches people how to do it. And I've called it, to be honest with you, because they say statistically, most people, before they go, go tell you a big whopper, they'll say, to be honest, Paul, um, <laughs> and it's not, it's not that you say, oh, the greatest of respect, officer. Yeah, you know there's no respect. Yeah, so I've called it, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And when's that being released? That's, oh, well, it should have been out already. It's going to be out in April, that is. Right, be, okay. I, I'm doing sort of book signs in Waterstones for that one. Oh, fantastic. So, and yeah, your, your right. original book, that's still available, self development. Project stuff. Jam Joy, yeah, that's on Amazon. You can get that anywhere, really. Yeah, if you can Google it, you're oh, brilliant. the brilliant. easiest place to get to be Amazon. Yeah, it's got some good reviews. So the future's bright f- for Darren, isn't it? I mean, you've got uh, COVID was horrible to you, wasn't it? I mean, wow, it, yeah. I mean, my bread and butter, really, Paul, is, is public speaking. Is I get booked, well, before COVID all over the world, but now um, it's more, more UK based, and, it's, and, and also with recruitment you know hr because of the fact that teams and zoom is so prevalent now 
um, before COVID, I was going into sort of sort of high level interview, sitting physically sitting yeah. in as a science observer and, and assessing candidates. You know, whereas now um, I either sort of just train HR people in this, um, or they they could just kind of do it themselves. So mm. yeah, Zoom has been a bit of a double edged sword. Yeah, and yeah, COVID was tough for a lot of people, but. Um... Yeah, when when you're doing what you do, you need to have that human interaction. You need to physically meet people. It's no good doing it on Zoom. You can't get the the, the true reflection of what's actually going on. No, because yeah, you're only getting the top off. You know, you don't get the reads of everything else. So, um, yeah, I did quite a few public speaking gigs on on Zoom, but it's never the same because you know, like you say, you're not getting that human connection because my stuff's very animated, very interactive. Yeah, yeah, of, of course it is. So, what does the future look like for Darren? What do you? I mean, I know that you've you've written stuff for television, and you you know trying to get that commission, which we we all know is pretty difficult. Yeah. But what what does the future look like for Darren? Well, again, I'm still pitching um, a couple of ideas I've got, um, and really, my passion is is the public speaking. So, you know, I want to do a lot more of that, and um, looking at a move to Cornwall as well. Um, it might happen next year, but failing that the following year. So, I love Cornwall. So, um, sort of really about isolate yourself, there. mate. You're going to be out of the bloody way down there. You, you're getting further from Manchester and London. <laughs> well, you can be, I mean, the sort of flies now, aren't they? So, you can be, you can be in London in sort of 40 minutes if you need to be, um, from um, Penzance. So, um, and you've, you've done a number of podcasts, haven't you? I, I did, um, I did one with the chap that you did one with, um, Sean Atwood. Oh, yeah, I did that the other night, yeah. Mate, he focused on the fact that I'd, I'd be that I was a mason and um, that I had some knowledge around the Essex boys, which I never worked on. I never ever worked on the Essex boy murders, but I've just done a film that, that came out um, with Signature and Revelation, which is on Sky at the moment. And I make it quite clear I never ever worked on the job, but some people just get in their heads that I did, including him. I think I think he, he thought I was trying to hide stuff from him. Well, I did it, and and it amazes me the trolls because I think oh. I'm pretty terrible trolls on there. But again, as you know, I'm a mason too, and I'm not got it on today. But um, you know, I usually wear my ring, and you've got your square of, and compass on your on your lapel. Oh, I do, yes, yes, you spotted that. Really. So, so the amount of like rubbish, the fact it's one porn person said I've screenshotted it and I've zoomed in. It's a masonic <laughs> ring. And I'm like, well, really? That's what you're doing in your spare time. You not listen to the content. You not listen to uh, taking the positives out of the interview. You're more concerned the fact that I'm a Freemason. In, in, it's absolutely incredible what some people get hung up about. I, I think I've said it to you before, but it's Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts for big boys. You know that, that's that's how I view Freemasonry. And yeah. uh, my friends are absolutely brilliant that take part in it. I'm terrible at it. I don't go often enough. I don't go often. I don't go at all. But yeah. um, you know, it is. But it is what it is. But yeah, he got really hung up, or his his viewers got really hung up on it, and he's got a hell of a following. He has. He has. Really, yeah. really. You know, but it's all about the conspiracy, and he was, you know, he's got a he's got an interesting background himself. Yeah. Really interesting. I didn't realize until after the interview, I googled him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's very open. He's very, very open about it. Yeah. You know, he, he got convicted of drug supply out in the USA, and um, he's a very, very interesting guy. But he does attract some real strange people. Yeah, and I, I just laugh at the, um, I just laugh at the at the, uh, the trolls really. Oh. Uh, some of the stuff they come out with. But um... do you know what? I I get quite disappointed by it because we. I did this thing with. Um, with Revelation and, and Signature around the Essex Boys. And people, there's, there's this massive conspiracy around the Essex Boys stuff. And, you know, people say, oh, the police were, the police were never involved. You know, that they messed out, the police didn't mess out. You know, they got the wrong people. No, they got the right people. But there's one guy, and I won't name him, but he's a retired police officer. This is somebody who's got a massive attention to detail, okay? And he started putting out that my wife works for somebody who used to, handle an informant um, who featured in this this film well my wife works for us that's the that's the first thing then yeah. he goes on about i've said in one of my podcasts that i was in the army i've never said i was in the army you, know, you just think where are these people but you yeah. get trolled i mean I, i've had horrendous messages you know they hope you die it's just 
oh, people, people get really about hung weight, up on it. About this, about that. Um, I did one for uh, Jack's mates who are, um, if they watch this, they're a fantastic couple of guys, Jack's mates. They've got a massive following. Um, and I told a story about, about an incident that I dealt with. And they're going, well, that's rubbish. Well, I'm, I'm cutting out the expletives. That's rubbish. He would never have done that as a civilian. And I'm like, no, I attended as, as an operational police officer. I never said I was a civilian. Like, so they just, they get, they get a bone and they just won't listen to anything else. No. No, they, the they don't. They don't. And and the thing is, if people understood, you know, why you you put the weight on during COVID, you know, you're unwell, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then maybe they'd be a bit more respectful. But they're not respectful. They're not respectful. No, they're terrible. Absolutely. Honestly, <laughs> people are vile. Initially, I did say I did respond to a couple and say, you know, obviously I was ill and the meds put up and put that. But you think you'd go on? Sorry about that. But no, it made it just like made them worse. I'm like, if that was if that was in the street, you know, they wouldn't they wouldn't go tap me on the shoulder or tap me on the shoulder and say, you know what, Darren, I don't like you, you know, and then give us verbal or somewhat give us verbal abuse. But it's the anonymity, isn't it? Yeah, the exactly. The warrior, they let the venom seep out of the fingers because they think they're um, the only time I've bit, and I'll be honest with you, I, sh I probably shouldn't have done it, but there was one person who was particularly vile. Um, and I managed to do a little bit of open source <laughs> data, and I found out this man was a 76-year-old in Brighton, right? And I actually put his photo on my Twitter feed and put, ever wondered about these people that sit up at 3 a.m. in the pants, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, like just spitting venom out. And his son contacted me, who was actually who followed me, um, and he said, "My dad's in tears. We live in a small town." just outside Bright, he says, well, everyone's talking about it. Can you take it off? I was like, no. I said, he's about to become a bit of a celebrity himself. I said, you know, and I did. I did take it off. But I said, just let him know, I, you know, out of respect, because he's, he's in you know, his 70s, there's a living, breathing person at the other end of that keyboard. Yeah. And just because we choose to put ourselves on telly, Paul, it's not a warrant to be verbally or, or abused. You no, know? it's not. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're human. I know you and I are tough and we've got thick skins, but there's lots of people in the media, as we've seen, that are vulnerable. And oh yeah, you know. Well, you, you only have to go and look at the you know the Caroline Flack stuff, and exactly. and you know there are a number of Caroline Flacks out there in the you know the the A-list celebs um, who are very vulnerable uh, because they are they're wrapped in cotton wool most of the time and as a direct result they there's a barrier between them and reality and then yeah. people start becoming really really vile and i do i find it i don't i've got the hide of a rhino but it's when it's an untruth yes that's the thing it's when it, yeah. i mean i get i get very animated and to a point where the stuff with the essex boys i'd actually gone and spoken to a kc friend of mine and said, look, you know, if this continues, I need to get a letter out and, and get it to stop because it's it's not true. It's and and the the problem is that these are former senior officers in the police who know it's untrue, and they know the risks that they face by telling untruths. And I just, as I say, I I'm I'm, I'm not going to take it forward at the moment. But if it if yeah. it continues, then I, I probably will. But Darren, what's what's planned for the rest of this year? I mean, you're at Lincoln on the first of December. Yes, I'm doing that. And then, to be honest with you, I've been trying to get a bit of a a bit of downtime, um, which has not happened all year. So I'm not moaning. No. Excuse me, I'm cutting down the work. So I think December, um, the rest of December, um, I'm just going to try and take a little bit of a break. I think um, I was hoping to shoot out to America for a couple of weeks because um, because before COVID, I used to spend it uh, Christmas in the states. Right. Um, Get a bit of sun, so potentially might might just shoot out, see see what deals are going around. Yeah, absolutely. And where do we find your tickets uh, yeah. for? So if you want to Eventbrite and just put Darren Stanton or um, um, you and Lie Detector, um, you'll get you get the Eventbrites. Um, go on my website, DarrenStanton.com, and then obviously Twitter or X, what silly name, um, at Darren Stanton. So anything Darren Stanton, you and Lie Detector, you'll um, people will be able to reach me. 
Darren, it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you today. Um, but I say this to everybody, and as a as an older police officer, you'll remember this. But have you got anything you'd like to add, alter, or correct in relation to the statement that you've made today? No comment. 